Hey, thank you for dropping by from our daily devotions for January 2nd, 2023. We're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 3, Luke chapter 20, Psalm 44, and Isaiah chapter 37. Let's pray. Father, speak to us in your word today. Change our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit by the truth of your word and make us fresh and new for this new year. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 3. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. Boy, we need a dose of that, don't we? Yes, sir. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through, our, through your apostles. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will, will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and, the, and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire. The elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promises, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. Wow, we do look forward to that. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same in all his letters, speaking of them in these matters. His letters contain some things hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable distort as they do the other scriptures by their own destruction. What he just said there is profound. He just said that the stuff Paul wrote was scripture, word from God. Hang on to that, folks. Hang on to that. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. That there's some powerful, powerful stuff in those 17 verse, 18 verses. And Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20. One day as he was teaching the people in the temple courts and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and teachers of the law together with the elders came up to him. Tell us by what authority you're doing these things and who gave you this authority. He replied, I will ask you a question. Tell me John's baptism, was it from heaven or from men? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, why didn't you believe him? If we say from men, all the people will stone us because they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they answered, we don't know where it came, where it was from. Just skip out on the, skip out on the answer, you know. Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. He went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers and went away on a long, for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him, sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, that one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent him away empty-handed. He sent a th still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him and inherit the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. 
What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, they said, may this never be. Jesus looked directly at them and asked, then who? Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. Teachers of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken the parable against them, but they were afraid of the people. Keeping a close watch on him, they sent spies who printed, pretended to be honest. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. So the spies questioned him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their duplicity and said to them, Show me a denarius whose portrait and inscription are on him. Caesar's, they replied, he said to them, then give to Caesar what is Caesar and to God what is God. So they were unable to trap him in what he'd said there in public. And astonished by his answer, they became silent. That means he shut their mouths wide open. Imagine that. Some of the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection uh, came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if, that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children... That man must marry the widow and have children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second and then the third married her, and in the same way, seven, the seven died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman died too. Now then at the resurrection, whose wife will she be since the seven were married to her? Jesus replied, the people of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in that age and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They can no longer die for they are like angels. They are God's children since they are children of the resurrection. But in the account of the bush, when even Moses showed that the dead rise for he calls the Lord, the Lord of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He's not the God of the dead, but of the living for to him all are alive. Some of the teachers of the law responded, well said, teacher, and no one da dared ask him any more questions. When Jesus, then Jesus said to them, how is it that they say that the Christ the son of, is the son of David? David himself declares in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. David calls him Lord, how can, be, how can he be his son? While all the people were listening, Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of the teachers of the law who like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted in the marketplace and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. Such men will be punished most severely. They were religious big shots. Don't want to be one of those. Just be a Christ follower. And Psalm chapter 44. This is a psalm of the sons of Korah. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand, you drove out the nations and planted our fathers. You crushed the peoples and made our fathers flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did, the, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand and your arm and the light of your face, for you loved them. You are my king and my God who decrees victories for Jacob. Though we, through you, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our boast all day long and we will praise your name forever. But now you have rejected and humbled us and no longer go out, of, out, out with armies. You made us retreat before the enemy and our adversaries, adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, having gain, gaining nothing from their sale. You made us a reproach to our neighbors and a scorn and derision to those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations. The people shake their heads at us. My disgrace is before me all day long and my face is covered with shame 
at the taunts of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy who is bent on revenge. All this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. Our hearts are not turned back. Our feet are not strayed from your path. But you crushed us and made us a haunt for jackals and covered us over with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it? Since he knows the secrets of the heart, yet for your sake we face death all day long and are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, O Lord, do not sleep. Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. And do not hide your face and forget our misery and oppression. We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Redeem us because of your unfailing love. And then Isaiah chapter 37. This is kind of a long chapter, but we'll just chop through it. When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, Shebna, the secretary and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They told him, this is what Hezekiah says, this day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace, and when, as when my children come to the point of birth and there is no strength to deliver them. It may be that the Lord your God will hear the words of the field commander whom, this, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God, and that he will be, rebuke him for the, for the words the Lord our God has heard. Therefore, pray, the remnant that still, pray for the remnant that still survives. When king, when king Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Tell your master, this is what the Lord says, Do not be afraid of what you have heard. These, those, are wor those words with which the underlings of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, I am going to put a spirit in him so that he hears a certain report. He will return to his country and there, will, and there I will cut him down with the sword. When the field commander heard this, the king of Assyria heard that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. Now Sennacherib received the report that Tirhaka, the Cushite king of Egypt, was marching out to fight against him. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah with, his, with this word. Say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God you depend on deceive you when he says Jer Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. Surely you have heard that the kings of Assyria have done all done to all the countries, destroying them completely, and you will be delivered. And and you will and you will be delivered. Did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my forefathers deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Horan, and Resef, the people of Eden, who were in the Tel Asar. Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, the king of the city of Sepharvim? or of Hena and Iva. Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, O Lord Almighty, God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to all the words Sennacherib has sent to insult the living God. It is true, O Lord, that the Assyrian king have laid waste to all these peoples and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them. They were not, for they were not gods, but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. Now, O Lord, our God, deliver us from the hand so that all kingdoms on earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Because you've prayed to me concerning Sennacherib's, Sennacherib, king of Assyria. This is what the word of, of the Lord has spoken against him. The virgin daughter of Sion despi despises and mocks you. The daughter of Jerusalem tosses her head as you flee. Who is it you have insulted and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted your eyes in pride? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have heaped insults on the Lord and you have said, with with my many chariots, 
I have ascended the heights of the mountains, the utmost heights of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars, the choicest of its pines. I have reached its remotest heights, the finest of its forests. I have dug wells in foreign lands and drunk the water there. With the soles of my feet, I have dried up the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? Long ago I ordained it. In the days of old I planned it. Now I have brought it to pass that you have turned fortified cities into piles of stones. Their people drained of power and dismayed and put to shame. They are like plants in the, in the field, like tender green shoots, like grass sprouting on the roof, scorched before it grows up. But I know where you stay and when you come and go and how you rage against me. Because you rage against me and because your insolent has re insolence has reached my ears, I will put a hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth, and it will make you return by the way you came. This will be the sign for you, O Hezekiah. This year you will eat what grows by itself. The second year was what springs from that. Then in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards, eat their fruit, once more, a remnant of the house of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remnant, and out of Mount Zion, a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. I will not, he will not enter this city or shoot an arrow here. He will not come before it with shield or build a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, he will return, and he will not enter this city, declares the Lord. I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. Then the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men of the Assyrian camp. Boy, look out for that angel of the Lord if you're on the other side. Woo! When the people got up the next morning, there were, there, there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. One day, while he was worshiping in the temple of his god Nisroch, his sons Adramalek and Sherezar cut him down with a sword, and they escaped to the land of Ararat. And Esarhaddon, Esarhaddon his son, succeeded him as king. Didn't work out so well for good old uh, the king of Assyria. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today. Change our lives from the inside out by the truth of your word. Help us know that you are sovereign and you rule. And write that on our hearts. Help us never forget it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I will talk to you soon.